Right, we will start now. Um, we've got more people joining, but we will start. Now, just a little bit of housekeeping rules, just so it's the benefit of everybody here. Um, I will introduce myself. My name is Vinod uh, Siani. I am uh, born and uh, in the United Kingdom, in London to be precise. I'll give some more information about me as an introduction, but some house rules first. Um, from time to time, I will engage with you by asking you to put your hands up, so to speak. Um, should you agree with me or if you've gone through similar experiences? For questions and answers, I will ask you all, please, to hold back until the very end, because some questions will probably be common to others as well. So we, we often find that questions, people, more than one person has the same question. So the answer is going to be very common. So I'll ask you all, please, to hold out for your answers and questions at the very end of the meeting. So today's webinar is about, is about understanding the journey. Where do you start from? Many of you perhaps have got an aspiration of wanting to go abroad, but don't know where to begin. Don't know who to trust. Don't know what questions to ask. And so I will make your life a lot easier by explaining to you through this webinar about the mystery that surrounds what we begin with, where we start, and the entire journey of making it easier for you to start uh, your process. Can I ask please, as a show of hands here, using your platform that you are, whether you're using a phone or using your computer, could you put a show of hands, how many of you are students who have an aspiration to go abroad to study? Just so I get an idea of how many people are interested in wanting to study. Antwi, Stephen, Cushy, thank you. One hand there. Who else has got some other hands? Anybody else? Okay. Thank you. A couple of people, and I'm sure we'll get more as we go along. We'll get more as we go. Thank you, Kishore Ban Banavi. Um, my apologies if I am pronouncing the names wrong, but welcome, Kishore, and thank you for raising your hands. Right. A little bit about me and what we're here for. So, about us. So, Educate Me is Educate Me Group. It's our company. What do we do? We are a UK based educational organization that provides consultancy to students, parents, etc. Primarily, we offer rounded support for learners at all stages of international study. And that's me at the bottom, Vinod Siani. I'm the Chief Executive Officer at Educate Me. I am one of the co-founders as well. Thank you. Over my years of working in the sector, I've been working in the sector for 36 plus years. And in those 36 plus years, I've worn many, many caps, many, many titles, many, many sections of jobs. One thing I see a lot is a lot of international students. At a guess, I always ask this question, can anybody kind of guess here by putting numbers in the chat box, how many students do you think have engaged with me, international students or students have engaged with me over 36 years. How many, how many students do you think I've helped? Any idea? 1,000, 2,000, any idea? Over 36 years. Put some numbers in and see where you, how far you get. 
So Anthony Stephen has got 2,000 plus. Ranish has got 2024. 20, Somebody's got 5,000. It's a lot more than that. It's a lot more than that. In one year, we averagely kind of help about 5,000 students, possibly even more. Lacks of students. Thank you, Rajesh Shekhar. Lacks of students. You're absolutely right. It is lacks of students. Um, we're probably looking in the region of half a million. Half a million students in the 36 years that we have kind of helped or I have helped. And it's such a proud moment. And it's a joyful experience for me as well, because I have a passion in wanting to help students. In fact, our Facebook, our Facebook followers are very impressive. We, we've got, you know, thousands of students and we'll come to that about later on. But it's impressive to have parents who are very proud to see their children have gone through the academic journey working, etc., becoming adults, mature adults, professionals now. And I'm still in touch with people even now. And I've got students who are now working and have emigrated, have got families, South India, Philippines, Australia, Canada, Australia, UK, a lot of people. And it's so good to see that they have progressed and become adults and professionals in their years. So that's a little bit about me. So let's move on to the next slide. What do we do? Our aim is to make quality education more accessible to students around the world. So no matter where you're from, what your background is, we want to be here to help you. Okay, that's the first thing we're gonna do. Right, let's move on to the next slide, thank you. You should always make sure that whatever agent you're going to choose, the agent has got some sort of accreditation or award to ensure that they are there, they're genuine. There should be some sort of system that you can go to, a database that you can go to and check that the agent you're using is genuine, is bona fide. At the very bottom of the, of the screen here, we can see some logos, OET, ICEF, British Council, Pearson's. These are all awards or accreditations that we have, Educate Me Group has. And so the, one of the things that you should be able to do is go to Google, type in British Council, find the, find the agent list that is approved by the British Council and check that the agent you want to use is listed. That is one way of doing some research and checking that there is some sort of groundwork that your agency has taken to make sure that they're genuine in what they want to do. I can, I'm sure many of you come from busy cities and in the cities that you're from, there are hundreds and hundreds of boards that say IELTS and study abroad. But which one do you trust? Who do you go to? Why is one better than the other? What is the service that they offer? These are things that we will look at today and I will tell you how and what to look for and what to be aware of. Keep yourselves away from fraudulent agents because fraudulent agents have certain techniques and I'd ask you to please stay away from those. Okay, next page please. So why educate me? Why should you choose us? What's different about us? Well, firstly, number one, we are an organization that are very passionate in wanting to help students. We're so passionate that we look at not only the student journey, but beyond that. We want to make sure that you are on the right pathway of making a career. And therefore, we provide you a service through one of our partners at Student Circus where you can look at getting gainful employment as an international student, and you can begin your career as an international student in the pathway that you want to go. And that process is actually very free, is free and it's only available from us. So one of the things you want to ask your agents is, 
are you accredited with student service? If you are, can you show us proof? Do you have a website? Does your agent that you want to go to have a website? Does it display on that website that it's accredited to universities? It's accredited to helping students with these aspects. So it's not just making sure it's just a study journey, but actually it's beyond that as well. Educate Me does not charge you for your counseling. Our entire process of willing to meet with you, work with you, looking at your profile, looking at what universities you want to go to, what is in your budget, that whole counseling and application process, there is no charge, it's free. Partnership with One Vasco. One Vasco, before it is now called One Vasco, it was called VFS. Hands up of those of you who perhaps know or heard of VFS, any idea? Has anybody in our group here who's joined ever heard of VFS? So VFS is an organization, it's a, it's a, a business medium that works with governments, in particular, the Indian government. And what it does is it helps the Indian government by receiving its visa applications for the United Kingdom. So when you are applying for a visa, student visa, tourist visa, you will often find that you will submit your visa to a counter. And that counter is a VFS counter. And that is where you submit your application. That VFS organization works on behalf of the United Kingdom government and the Indian government. And it's a service that provides you where you can submit your documents. We are already an invested partner and again, ask your agent, are they partnered with VFS One Vasco? And that gives you another reason why you should perhaps think about who you need to join if you're going to be making an application to go overseas. Next page, please. So tips to find the right agent. Make sure you do your research. Make sure the agent you're using has got a reputation. If you go to Facebook, search the name of the agent. The whole, the whole the agent's name, it could be whatever, ABC agents. Do they, uh, do they have a Facebook page? How many followers? Educate me, I'm proud to say, has got 41,000 followers. It's got a YouTube channel of 1,000 plus. The whole process, I can see one question here on the screen, Crucial K Togo. Is the whole process, is it free? Yes, the whole process is free. And that's something that we're proud of. We don't charge you any penny. If your agent or person, consultant, whoever, is asking you to pay a fee, please stay away from them. Do not pay them any fee. Do not use them. Because they are getting a fee for your counseling for placing you at a university. That fee is called a commission. Even we get a commission from the university that we place our students from. And because we get that fee, we, there is no reason for us to charge you up front. So we are already being paid for the service that we're giving you. Hence, if your consultant or agent is putting a charge for the service, they can call it anything they like. They can say it's an application fee. They can say it's a, uh, um, a guidance fee. Don't pay them anything. Please don't go to them because they are agents who are double earning. They are earning from you and they are earning from the university who they may be working. So please don't use those agents, okay? Already that is that is perhaps a scam and I would ask you to stay away from it, all right? 98% of our students and families have already given us a 5% score, okay? So please look at the reputation and the research of the organization that you're willing to put your life's hands in, okay, in terms of getting guidance for your next career. Ensure that your agent is accredited, affiliated. Go to the British Council website, look at agents, search Educate Me Group, and you will see that we are already listed as an approved agent. Go to ISEF, search, and you'll see we are already there. 
So these are organizations that you should be checking to make sure. So please stay away from organizations who do not hold such accreditations. Okay, thank you. Next. Make sure the agent that you use is willing to give you all of the guidance you need. They're very patient. They're not rushing you. They don't want to push you to a university where they may be getting higher commission. So stick to the university that you want to go to. You may be interested in a university because you're a friend or that you have family accommodation nearby. And therefore, you want to go to a particular university. Make sure you stick to that university. Don't let them change your mind unless they give you genuine reasons to consider otherwise. Okay? So please make sure. Admissions generally take about two to three weeks or more. It does depend on busy periods of universities. Personalized approach. They are patient. They're willing to listen to you. They recommend universities and courses that are aligned to your aspirations. You may want to do business management. You may want to do engineering. Don't let them talk you out of engineering and say, why don't you go for this course? It is better. Go for the course that you want to do. Make sure you do your research at the universities. Don't just go for what the agents tell you. Please do some research yourself. If you are interested in a course, you are interested in a location, Search that location in Google. Find universities in that region who do your courses. And that way you can get an idea of the fees. Okay? You should never, ever part money with your agent. Your money should be transferred directly from your bank account directly to the university. And there should be evidence of a bank transfer. There should be no cash withdrawal going directly to your agent. Never, ever do that, please. Next, please. We were talking about visa assistance, and this is, again, just another outline screen of showing you that we are already working with one Vasco VFS, as it used to be called. And what we do is we make sure that your file, when you are submitting it for visa, it is pre-checked. And therefore, that pre-checking exercise gives us that assurance of 99.9%. .9 your visa has, your application for visa, your file, has been checked rigorously, including financial statements, including personal statements, including mock interviews. And these are all things that we will do to make sure you're guaranteed a successful visa. So we never want to put you into a spot where you are going to be apprehensive in getting a visa. We want to make sure you get your visa, okay? And that application fee and that entire process is free of charge for you, okay? Thank you. Next, please. Support services. The services that you get from your agent, be it us, be it anybody, it should be above and beyond just a student application. We can offer you airport pickup. We can offer you accommodation assistance. We can't offer you accommodation sometimes, but we can definitely try and offer you some assistance in finding and sourcing accommodation near to the university, perhaps a bed sit, perhaps with other students of your nationality, of your language. And that way is something that we can support you. And again, that entire service is all available to you. Some aspects, there is a fee. Example, uh, airport pickups, there will be a fee. Yes, Sachin, all are general guidelines, yes. At the end, I will be asking if there are individual questions because these are all stories and inquiries that I come across every year from students, from parents of experiences that they've had. And how can they avoid them? And these are all things that guidance we tell you. Do not leave everything to others to help you. You do some guidance and research yourself. After all, it's a lot of money that you're using. And parents 
will understand that the visas, all of this is processes, visa is important part. Okay, all right. Well, we'll go to those questions later on. So you want to make sure that the parents' money that you're using and the parents' money that they're investing in your education is not going to waste. They have saved up hard to get and support you. So please, please, do take the time to do some research. Okay? Thank you, uh, Magna. At least we're getting somebody. Thank you very much. Right. Network and part uh, partnerships. You want to make sure that the university you're going to has got a direct link with the agents that you're going to use. There are a lot of agents out there who pretend to have agency agreements, pretend to have relationships with universities. Many of them don't have direct relationships. And that is something that you want to try and stray away from, okay? So please, again, do your research and check. Ask them questions. Are they an agent of a university? Do they have any record, any document? Is it on their website to show that they are a recognized partner of this university? All of our websites all show freely of all the universities that we work for, the testimonials that we have. And so we're not hiding anything. We want to make sure that you, the individual, are going to be dealing with a reputable organization above and beyond. Any doubt, we want to make sure that service is all there for you. And above all, it's free. You're not spending one rupee, one penny to you for us in helping you to get that information. OK, next slide, please. So. One of the things that we do, one of the things that we do, we have online courses, we have institutional training, study abroad for the very thing that you're all here for, teacher training and English training. Now, we, we see lots of boards that say IELTS and PTE, but is the organization accredited to do IELTS training, PTE training? and so forth. So again, you want to make sure that all of your agents you go to are bona fide, are, pro are providing you correct guidance. Next slide, please. These are just some of the universities that we work with across the globe. It's not just Europe. It's not just United Kingdom. It's Canada. It's Australia. It's Europe. It's United Kingdom. So there are dozens and dozens of universities, in fact, over 120 other university partners. Next question, please. So there are three types, undergraduate, postgraduate, and PhD. Undergraduate, postgraduate, PhD, you can look at doing these courses in whichever country you want. You may have an idea of what you want to do. I will tell you more about reaching out to us and how we can guide you more on an individual tailored manner to help you with your inquiry and where you want to go. Okay, next please. What are the tuition fees? What are the promotions out there at the moment? Right now, Europe is standing out as a big opportunity for Indian students who are wanting to look at study abroad. So much so that their application fee, the tuition fee, is sometimes more than half of what it costs for you to study in the United Kingdom. Some universities, have a Europe base and a UK base. And what you could do is do the third year or the final year of your course in the United Kingdom. So you although are saving costs, paying university fees by studying in Europe, you can actually do the final year in the UK and that way you come out with a UK university degree. And you can also take advantage of the PSW that you can stay in the UK for. Thank you. Next slide. 
scholarships, of course, we all look at our pocket. We all want to make sure that we're getting value for money. And we all want to make sure that if there is a discount, if it means I have to pay less, I want to hear about it. So in the United Kingdom, universities do offer scholarships, do offer bursaries. Europe, however, at the moment has got a massive promotion of 50%. So I would urge some of you who are perhaps not inclined to look at a destination or are considering Give Europe, a th give Europe a thought, just hear out what Europe has to give you and then make your decision and see, it might be best choice for you, okay? Next please. So the list of documents, these are common for pretty much any university or any course that you want to go to. These are common list of documents that we will need. And again, our counselors can take you through an individual tailored profile to take from you what we need, when we need it, and where we will be submitting it to on your behalf. Next, please. So, submitting your inquiry. Now, for those of you perhaps who are on your computer screen, can I ask you please to do a screen print and those of you who are on mobile phone, again, perhaps you can do a screen print because I want you to go and visit the application. I want you to go and visit this website. I want you to download the application form. And this is where you would create your profile, giving your individual details and then submitting it. And you would submit it by sending it as an email to hello at educateme.group. So please can I ask you to do this now, make sure you do a screen print and send this directly because this is where your process will begin. Next, please. Again, please take a moment to visit our website, visit the video gallery, there is lots of information there. We have lots of videos to try and guide you on what we can help you with. And so please, please take a moment to go and visit these videos, okay? Any more? Right, I believe we've reached the end of our uh, PowerPoint. And this is where now we will try to help you individually with any individual questions. Now, we've got a video here which Again, you can just individually visit our website. I won't ask our IT team to play it because it's actually around about a two minute video and I'm sure we can save two minutes by having questions and answers. But the video is on our screen and please do make use of it, okay? Right, so I'm now going to open up the platform to questions and answers. There will be, there will be some questions which are going to be individual, and I will not be able to answer them. But I will guide you to speak to, to speak to our counselors, and they are the ones, after gathering a profile, will be best placed in giving you that advice, okay? <laughs> Can I ask my team, please, to bring up the counselors' contact details and names? And again, please, can I ask you to take a screenshot and then go ahead and please do inquire with them should you need to. You can approach them by WhatsApp and whatever. So can I ask our team please to share those details here? Right, questions and answers. Now please, questions. Can I have your questions? Thank you, Alicia. Right, are there any questions please? So the contact details have been shared here on the chat. So please make sure you take a screenshot. I can see somebody has put last date of applying for EU. Well, there are intakes for June and there are intakes for September, October. So I would assume you're probably too late for June, but you're definitely in line for September, October. The last date generally would come be will be around about end of July, middle of August, okay? 
do you facilitate admission to Ivy Leagues? Ivy Leagues, yes, but we would have to approach each university separately. And there would be a charge in that because the Ivy League universities do not pay any commission to agents. Okay, so generally we don't we don't use that. Do you have a training program for USMLE? What does that mean? Medical licensing examination when a uh, USMLE. Right. So we have got OET and we're licensed to deliver English under occupational English testing. So OET is definitely something that we can help you with. Other than that, no. I hope that kind of answers your question. Kishore and Antwi. Uh, what's the impact of an increase in the minimum salary threshold for UK, whether it can affect the job prospects after studies? Good question. Very good question. Recently, the United Kingdom had announced that should the employer want to sponsor a student as an employee, the wage for sponsoring an employee, a student, is going to increase significantly to now 38,000 pounds. I believe that is 38 lakhs. But there is question about that right now, and it's still in Parliament, whether it should be as high or whether it can be reduced. This year, we are going to go through an election. And I believe one of the things that will happen is immediately they will be looking at the students and looking to re-bring students back into study in the United Kingdom. Okay, the government are looking at reducing, but I think it's all to do with how the United Kingdom look at students as an individual body. The government looks at students as an individual body and it says there's too many students coming into the system. But actually, it's not the case. The students are all earning and they're all paying their way and they're all paying tax. And that is something that needs to be brought across to the public here in the United Kingdom. Study visa success. Uh, well, actually, it's unbelievably very high at the moment, especially when you have facilitations for looking at visa assistance in advance of applying for your visa. So the success of your visa is very high, considering that we're very proactive in making sure that before you submit your visa, all processes have been looked at, including your financial situation, whether you're using documents of your family or your, or your parents, etc. So we look at all of that. And that's actually an offer. That's actually something that we do for free, believe it or not. Okay, and it's done by VFS One Vasco. Uh, offers for nurses. At the moment, we don't have anything for nurses, but it is something I will tell you that we will be looking at within the six months. Okay, well, we are going to be looking at that in six months. And I assume that question offers for nurses is qualified nurses going to the United Kingdom for employment. I assume that's what that means. Is Malta good for students or for studies? Yes, it is. Malta is very good for studies and the government of Malta, because the, gov because the country is short of skilled labor, it is giving an opportunity for students to stay in Malta, live in Malta, and once you stay and live in Malta, from the taxes that you pay to the Maltese government, they will give 70% of your university's fees back in tax credit. What about that? That is how much they need people to stay and live a skilled shortage in Malta. So the answer to your question is Malta good for studies? Definitely. Any other questions, please? Kishore has raised his hand. I don't know if your hand has been up for a while. My apologies, but uh, do you have a question, Kishore? Uh, Jack, Jack, are there universities in Malta or colleges? Yes, there are. And again, 
we will need to look at your individual profile before we can guide you what type of courses in universities you should look at. Uh, Antwi Stephen, may I please, may I please have a look at, uh, please can I ask you to do a submission of an inquiry form and so we can guide you accordingly to what your question is. Uh, Mr. Jat Jat, I had a refusal last year. Okay. I don't know what the reasons are for the refusal, but we will have to look at that before we can give you any type of clear guidance. Okay. It's not something that we should discuss openly uh, on this platform. And I hope you respect that. Thank you, Guru, for sharing the form. Any other questions? SOP was not well prepared. There you go, isn't it? I mean, it's very poor, isn't it, when you've done so much hard work and then the SOP ends up being poorly written and yet accepted by the university. Uh, again, we will be making sure something like that doesn't happen, okay? Will I get employment after school? Um, once you're studying in the United Kingdom, if you're doing a master's degree, you can get PSW, okay? You can get PSW. You can then work uh, in, the, in the United Kingdom for two years, okay? If you're doing a bachelor's degree, you can also get two years of PSW. PSW allows you to work in the United Kingdom. It allows you to work 20 hours per week, 20 hours. Now, the government here in the UK enforce a minimum wage per hour. That minimum wage is approximately 12 pounds. I think it's 11 pounds 47, something like that. Um, and that is what you get per hour. So let's just call it 10 pounds as a round figure. 10 pounds, which is basically 1,000 Indian rupees, approximately, per hour. Now, if you're working 20 hours a week, that's 20,000 rupees you are earning in a week. And that is white money. That is working without breaking any law. Okay. On top of that, you can work in the black if you wanted to. But it's not something we would advise, of course, as being your university guidance uh, partner. But it is opportunities. Lots of students do work extra hours to pay their way. What does it cost? For accommodation, accommodation generally it would cost in the region of five to six hundred pounds per month. And it can be cheaper if you share accommodation with other like minded individuals. Is there any university colleges in Europe that offer masters in industrial product design courses? I'm sure there are, and these are specific courses. So it will be difficult perhaps to find specific, but you may be able to find something that's broadly similar. Okay, and again, we would need one of your inquiry forms submitted please, so we can talk to you individually and guide you more appropriately. And effectively. You know, there's a question from Raj Shekhar. He's asking yes. to assist on study MBBS abroad. We don't. We don't. MBBS, it's a it's a big, big exercise because you've got to submit a large amount of portfolio work. Um, but to say that we are looking at venturing into the healthcare within six months. OK, so if it's something that you're not looking at right now, perhaps by October this year, I will be looking at venturing and giving you more help in the healthcare industry. That's as best I can do right now. I'm afraid. I want to be as honest and as frank as possible. Okay. If I can't help you, I will tell you up front because I, I wouldn't want to guide you otherwise. 
That's wrong. Is there any other questions? We're coming up to 45 minutes now. Um, can I do a master's in IT and a nurse? Uh, very difficult for me to answer that without actually a bit more specific details. Um, yeah, I get, I get that it was a nurse, but which would be your predominant master's degree? Would it be nursing? Would it be IT? Because theoretically, if you're studying something, there's no reason why you can't do any other courses whilst you're in the United Kingdom, but you would have to pay for them separately. That's understandable. Whether there is a nursing with an IT degree, I don't think so. It's two separate, two separate complete areas. So I don't think you can get IT and nursing together. All right. Can I ask everybody, please, and I urge you all, please, to please, please complete the inquiry form. We want to help you with your aspirations. We want to make sure you're guided effectively, professionally, honestly. Okay, please, please take the advice that I've given you. If you don't use us, but want to use somebody else, please, please take on board what I've told you. Do your due diligence, do your checks, do your research. Don't just jump for the first agent that you see. I ask you humbly, please don't waste your money, okay? Every penny counts. Parents, my parents, when they were around, I know how hard they worked on the farm, okay, to get their living. And I know how difficult it is. And I urge you all, please, um, to please think carefully when you are looking at wanting to study abroad, go for the right advice. Go to somewhere which will give you that honest, impartial, correct guidance, okay? Thank you. If there's no more questions, I will close. I will call this webinar to a close. I hope you have found it very useful. And hopefully I will be talking to you in the next coming weeks. One question. Go ahead, Mr. Kishore. One question. Masters in strategy, what are the options? Strategy, well, <laughs> again, I assume you're talking about business strategic, management strategic. I, I assume it's kind of a master's MBA in, in business strategic. There are plenty of options. There are plenty of universities, plenty of colleges that offer you a master's degree in business strategic immigration, uh, international marketing management strategic. It's always going to be strategic when you're going to be doing it as a master's level. There are lots of options, lots of fee options, lots of universities where it depends you want to study, whether you want to study in, if it's in the United Kingdom, but where? The United Kingdom has got four states. Where do you want to be? Do you want to be in an A1 metropolitan city where employment is going to be easier? Or do you, or you're not minded whether you want to be in a metropolitan city, you don't mind being outside in a rural area where accommodation will be cheaper, but employment will be difficult to get. University fees will be cheaper, but again, paying for those fees uh, university uh, employment will be more difficult because you're living rural, not in an A1 metropolitan city. Right, okay. Uh, Mr. Gurav Wright, thank you very much for your presentation and navigation skills. Uh, Mr. Ali Akwa, if he's here, I appreciate all the help that you've done behind the work, behind the screens. I will call this meeting to an end. Thank you, everybody. Have a lovely evening.